Thank you, Sora. I can tell you found us a sound idea. Well, I guess we should try and put it to work. Sound idea not enough? Don't worry. I've got a friend out there who'll help. He's always picking up the slack for me. to make even more powerful music. Yeah. Two forces are better than one. Right, Riku? Okay. Can I get in there to fight that thing now? Yes. But Sora... I'll be fine. See you in a jiff. Alright, so we picked up Double Impacto. What did that do? I assume it's just Sonic Impact again. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's just... It's just that again. Let's show it off. Dash... Holy shit. So, then you get roll, dash, double dash. And I can't even... I can do the sidewinder afterward, but this room isn't big enough. I hit a wall. We're going crazy. Alright, we are... Uh, we're running low on drop meter. So let's uh, go ahead and refill that. I accidentally used a dream candy, didn't I? Fuck me. Also, we're out of fucking drop me nuts anyway. Let's go ahead and buy a couple. Let's see. We got it. Unlock quite a few commands we can buy here, too. Where are you? Maybe I should look in the items section instead of instead of being dumb. There we go. That should be enough for the rest of the game. I would hope. Dream candies are really good because they raise the uh, your dream eater's uh, link. Which is really good when you're trying to grind it out. I forgot that. Oh, wait, no, this is a different deck. Doy. There we go. Okay. We're in tip top shape. I say that as my dinosaur is dying. There's the. <laughs> he was standing on the save point. He was trying to heal on his own, you little babushka. Let's go take this thing on. So I forget if, how I do this is the right way to fight him. But this is finally here to fight the only Dream Eater that is actually, like, prevalent throughout the worlds. I mean, granted, this thing summons the earlier ones, but I mean, of its own volition. This is the, uh, the Spelican. Now, I believe the way to do this, the way I did it, was always just dashing, spamming dash like this. And this will get you ahead. You need to catch up to him to deal a hit. So we hit this until he's in range. Which I believe it just does it automatically. Yes. You deal the hit, and he brings you into the boss arena to fight. And he'll teleport a lot and be uh, super annoying. Has a lot of HP, too.
Thankfully, um, our plasma does seek, which is a little helpful. Holy crap, he's already, he's already killing me. Let's use Comet. Your time has come. That did a little bit of damage, but hey, I just wanted the Link credit. How the hell did I miss him? So, he'll he'll hide up on some of these rocks just to cast. So be wary of it. And then he's like, oh, fuck this shit, then. Hey, yeah, I'll get him with the third. But overall, this dude isn't too bad so long as you might be mindful of your health, because he can throw a lot of stuff at you. And this fight is a bit more chaotic than uh, the average cage fight. I also learned recently that the, an another reason why this game is a little bit less polished, I would say, than, say, Birth by Sleep is dev time. You gotta forget, but this game had two years to be made. Two years of dev time, whereas Birth by Sleep had three to four. So it's not too surprising that they, uh... That, you know, any a lot of issues people have with this game, you know, could have been alleviated with more time in the oven to really just get these things figured out, which also makes sense why uh, a couple of these worlds were going to be slightly different as I outlined in previous episodes. Fuck it. Bully him. Oh, don't you run. I hate it because he'll go for an attack and then immediately teleport out, and I'm like, coward. Thankfully, the balloons will still seek, even if you teleport away, you coward. Now, this it's very luck-based, uh, this phase, also, because he can leave any time. He can just go not interested and then force you to go the grind rail segment to chase him again. And I don't know how it triggers again. So we might... Uh, yeah, yeah, we would get it, wouldn't we? Yeah, I shouldn't have mentioned it, right? That, that was the lesson, wasn't it? That was the... As if this part's hard. Let's go get him. Basically hit sliding dive as soon as you're about to get hit by the rock. It takes a little bit of finesse. I don't know a skilled way to do this section. Like, this section needs more time in the oven, because there's no dodge. It's just, fucking spam dodge and maybe you'll, maybe you'll get through it. It doesn't seem well designed in the slightest. I mean, the other obvious issue is you can't even heal. And it looks like if you get really low, he just gives it to you. I appreciate I appreciate that. If unless that was just a coincidence. Well, we got him. That's one part of this world down. Thank 
Thanks, Sora. Don't know what I would have done without you. <laughs> oh no! Huh? The water! Oh, I'm in big trouble if I don't fetch it. See you real soon, Sora. Yeah, you know it. So that is the first part of Symphony of Sorcery. We now gotta check out the second part with my main man Riku. Flow motion turbo increase the damage by flow motion attacks. Oh, that could be good. Hey. Right. I said, alright. Just let me claim it. Bring me to the light. Okay. Oh, thank God, it's a normal... It's a normal one of these. Defeat 30 enemies. I mean, sure. It's, like, super easy to do. Like, kill enemies, get in line, buddies. Your days are numbered. Got your number, and you're dead. I can't find any more. <laughs> Fucking. I'll have my revenge. Swear to God, if I don't get an A rank now, I'm totally blaming it on that one hit I took. Yeah, that got us a bunch. I guess they give that to you so you can finish this finish this dive sequence pretty easily. You better give it to me, man. I've worked very hard. Please? Thank you. Ooh, a fleeting fantasy. Look at those bubbles. Those flat bubbles. A flood? Strange. It's coming from upstairs. Well, these kind of things happen. <laughs> of course, a water barrel. Mickey! It's this musical score. It has him trapped. You won't be able to defeat that darkness with brute force. I'm Mickey, the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Who are you? Uh, uh, Riku, if brute force won't work, tell me what will. Do you really mean you're gonna try and help me? Yes. Gosh, Riku, something tells me you and I are gonna be good friends and we'll help each other out a lot someday. Inside this music is a sound idea powerful enough to dispel the darkness. Can you find it? I'll try. Leave it to me. Thank you. 
Well, that was a bit problematic, you dumb mouse. <laughs> Let's go fix your problem. Here we are, good old, good old happy music for it. Alright, let's, let's see if we can find these notes. I'm already well leveled, so I don't need to fight much stuff. Riku's like level 31 or some shit. I got most of those. This might be my favorite world for DDD. I like really, I really like the gimmicks and stuff they do with this quite a bit. That and the use of color and locations. This is the type of stuff where the maps seem a bit more intricate and less really big boxed empty rooms. Though this still has a little bit of that, but because you can't fully get away from them, you know what I mean. Are you going to have the same amount of health as last time? Because you carried health last time I fought you. I would love it, because I'm not going to kill you otherwise. <laughs> You're a very strong but You do! If I can get him. Alright, looks like I knocked him out, but I gotta get his gang. Meteor crash that. That gave me an HP boost. <laughs> he, this dude just appears everywhere. Lord Kairu. Wow, that's uh. Let's have a look at that. Really, I don't think I've ever killed that because I've been ever, just haven't gone out of my way for it. Lord Kairu. Here he is. Master of the sword and sorcerer with the most. This brave little smarty pants makes for a staunch companion. Unless he catches fire. Too brilliant fantasy and a noble fancy. I'm gonna go look him up, if you folks don't mind. So I can let you guys know what he what he has. Because <laughs> I'm interested. Because uh, thank you. Th Shoutouts to cagewiki.com. Do good work there. Uh, his prize list contains Blitz, Zantetsuken, Ars Arcanum. Okay. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Triple Plasma, Combo Master, Defender, Magic Boost, Haste, Cure Boost, Thunder Boost. Bunch of boosts. Um, yeah. Picking up Combo Master that makes it so I can do my full combo even if I'm not nailing any of the hits against an enemy on top of Ars Arcanum, it makes him one of the most useful ones. I would argue just as good, if not better, than something gives you second chance or once more. 
I got most of that. Just give it to me, man. Give me the hook up. Yeah, I think it's that that I really like. Just the, the, the neon flower bed. Alright, so we're now in a nice little reddish, reddish forest. I really have to wonder if the issue that I have with Dream Drop Distance and Birth by Sleep is truly going to be alleviated in future games like KH3. I have to wonder... Because as much as it's great to be a, a beacon of positivity, you assume, because it's going to a console, and the things, the way they've shown things, that these it's going to be a game where the world is populated with people, and the areas are having a good focus on platforming, and that you're just, you're going to be spending time in this world, and it doesn't feel hollow. Like, like that's the biggest issue. And we have to, like, have to hope that that's, that they can achieve that. I want to believe that a lot of their issues were hampered by uh, fast development cycles and shitty hardware. Um, because everything I see about everything when I played 0.2, that, that's really good in the fact that it has a lot more verticality, proper puzzles are inputted into it, the level design is big, but in more than just wideness. It's... You you can explore quite a bit of it. And everything they show about Cage 3 kind of looks like what I would want. A large sense of verticality in multiple different sections of like, grinding on rails to take out stuff, jumping off cliffs, swimming, all these various lo things you do in the locations. All of it seems good, but trailers are meant to entice you. And then the reality sets in. Because there's part of me that goes, well, this team has done a specific type of game since they've been the leads on KH. But can you also give them the benefit of the doubt based on what they had to work with? I'm willing to do that, but there's always that back in my mind where I'm like, is this still going to be like a linear, like what I do here? Because I was thinking about it because I'm basically just blitzing, blitzing this part of the game. Where I'm just, I'm just running through it, I know exactly what to do. You're mostly just dashing. But if there's going to be a level of exploration, the occasional puzzle, and some fun segments like that, um, I'll cry. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm really looking to get, to get a game that feels alive. And after they showed the Tangled uh, concept... Or not even concept art, but in-engine stuff that they hadn't, hadn't had ready for trailers showing NPCs well over a dozen on screen. I got hope. I got really hope that they're going to nail the most hilarious problem that these games have. Of, yo, four people live per world. What the fuck is going on? Doesn't need to be in every world. Toy Story doesn't need it. It's toys. <laughs> But other worlds where, you know, you would assume multiple people live in them, yeah. You're, you're gonna need to put a little bit of work in there. Don't do the hunchback again. You ruined one of my favorite movies and didn't do it very well in this game. So please. Anyway, here's the note.
You waiting for me? Yes. The boy chosen by the Keyblade. Riku. What? It was yours first, wasn't it? But you succumbed to the darkness you could not control. And your prize, the Keyblade, passed on to Sora instead. Your mistakes always end up being other people's problems. Maybe so. But I'm here to change all of that. Once again, you performed predictably, although on a grander scale than I imagined. If you're feeling so chatty, let's skip to where you reveal what this is all about. I don't know how you did it, but you really have found a way to trap darkness inside your heart. And a boy who's immune to darkness is of no use to us. Well, there's some good news. Your abyss awaits. Good old Chernabog from Kingdom Hearts 1. In the place he would most belong, a Fantasia world. By the way, it's not a real boss fight. Well, it kind of is. It's a dive section. Similar to the final boss of Sonic Unleashed. You dash toward the dude, avoiding damage. I mean, that's an optional thing, I guess. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so fucking bad. Avoiding damage. And once you get right up into his grill, you'll deal deal some damage. Repeat the process. So the whole point is avoiding taking hits so you can get to him quickly. Also, to just do diving strikes. If you want to get there quickly, that's the key. You can also end up totally dodging some of this stuff if you mash it out like this. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Also, it deals one bar every time you make it over. So you just got to deal three hits. However, there's one caveat. He adds a little bit of an annoyance to the whole thing. Little phantoms that suck out your HP. You gotta hit square to do your uh, dodging deflect to get rid of them. There also are some health balls that appear occasionally here that I'm gonna wanna I'm gonna wanna take advantage of. I might die because this is still kind of challenging. Oh, nice. He got a little bit of health out of that. Believe he's gonna do the beams? No, not the beams. Alright, one more hit. But I only have like 30% HP. Okay, a little bit more than that, but you get me. Also, he is the farthest away he's ever been. Also, these phantoms are white. Why? Because, I don't know, different. I was hoping I could grab some of that. Uh, I could grab... I was gonna say I could grab that, but... Apparently not. Come on! You... F fucking ridiculous. How the hell did I not get that? I am horrible death perception. Get fucking hit by all of them. They can't kill you. They can bring you to one, though. That's what they've done to me. They're still bringing me to one. These fucking assholes. <laughs> Got him. Oh, thank God. He was about to really lay into me, too. I promised to make it interesting. Oh. <laughs> 
I appreciate that Sora and Riku recognize that Dearly Beloved is the tightest shit. That was amazing! What happened? Sora. Sora? <laughs> Funny. Just hearing that name kind of makes me want to smile. Yeah. That's how he is. What do you know? Riku and Sora. The sound ideas you two set free joined together. And when they did, they made a great and powerful harmony. Hm. Sora can find the brightest part of anything and pull off miracles like there's nothing to it. It's pretty hard not to smile around him. Wow. No wonder the music sounded like so much fun. But I bet he's got you to thank for that. Having such a good friend means he could really enjoy it. Huh? It's like each of you is holding on to a little part of the other. Your hearts are always in tune, so they're free to sing. Gosh, I hope I can be part of the team someday. You will. Trust me. <laughs> Master Yen Sid? Gosh, do you think he'll be able to do it? Hmm. It's clear you cannot teach a cat to bark. But Merlin and the three good fairies are aiding him in a place that's more temporally flexible. My hope is that he can at least learn to wield it. He certainly has fire. So I suppose it depends now on how strongly it burns. Oh. But what about Sora and Riku? Well, if we are running on the assumption Xehanort knew what we were planning, then he still would need to have been there. Back in the very place and time when the Destiny Islands were lost to darkness. Otherwise, Sora and Riku would have been beyond his reach. Mm. Gee, do you really think it's possible Xehanort could have planned things that far in advance? No, as a matter of fact, I do not. But what if he did the same thing as Sora and Riku did, and he jumped through time? For that to work... A version of himself would have had to exist at both Source and Destination. Not even Xehanort can transport his whole body across vast reaches of time. <gasps> oh! Oh no! I remember, Xehanort did give up his body! It was a version of him that was possessing Riku! No, it cannot be. Could he be that cunning? Possess that kind of foresight? <laughs> if it's all right with you, can I go help Sora and Riku out? How? You cannot enter the world of a dream. Where will you go? If Xehanort really is behind all this, then they won't stay in the dream worlds forever. Eventually, they're gonna reappear somewhere that we can go reach them. And we can even probably guess the place. Follow the hearts, and you'll find the way. That's something Master Aqua told me once. Hmm. Can we go? We're going too! Ah, fellas, you're my best pals. 
but this time, I really do need to go it alone. The dangers are greater than anything we've ever faced before. If something were to happen to Sor and Riku and me, why, you'll be the only ones left to keep this world safe. Oh. Mickey, I was not able to locate Sora, but I sense Riku's presence in the realm between. Trust your heart, and I know you will find him. Thank you. I promise I'll bring them both back safe and sound. <laughs>